uh, from Old Street Station, and if you can see my mouse roaming around, Old Street Station, just here, I'll meet you. Uh, don't go roaming around, because I won't find you. And uh, we're going to come out here, 10 o'clock we're meeting, aren't we? Approximately, it's okay if you're early or late. Uh, my telephone number's up here, by the way, just give me a call. Uh, but I anticipate being there before you. Now, we're going to come out of the Old, old Street uh, entrance, or exit this side. We're going to go up here just here. Sometimes uh, there's some fabulous graffiti up on the wall. You'll be graffiti out by the end of this up on this wall here. Uh, but they've been doing lots of building, so it might have gone, they might change it. It changes almost daily. So we're going to come through here to Rivington Street. It's quite a nice little area. Uh, not much to see, I'll be honest, but then we've got to get to the next location, and which is Curtain Road, very old Curtain Road, and New Inn Yard, uh, which is this here. Beautiful graffiti all around here, as you would expect. And we're going to go to the theatre. Well, not quite. So here we are. Uh, this is the theatre courtyard. And it was the site of the original uh, Shakespeare uh, theatre. And um, Henry V and Romeo and Juliet first performed there, etc. And uh, if you want to, uh, to read any of the stuff that's on here, you have to put it on pause so that you can read it and then unpause it and move on. Because I can't produce this as a PowerPoint, which is what it is, uh, within Facebook. So going back, we're now going to come through here uh, and up uh, Anning Street. And um, we could do that, but we're not because this is a nice little area around here, different stuff going on. Uh, through here up to uh, the Shoreditch High Street. And you'll, you'll know this church. You will know this church because of this. <laughs> exactly what every child wants to do and in fact uh, when I was a kid we used to do that in the courtyard where I'm going to show you uh, very soon and this is uh, the verse this is the, the newer verses this is the one I remember but there's an older one uh, and this is the uh, where the church bell is actually held and it is quite a spectacular building I'm pretty certain that we won't be able to get in there um, but anyway you, if you want to have a look in at some stage, same with another church we're going to see, you'll have to book it. So here we are, we're going to go around the back of the church, round through here, and we're going to come onto this estate here, and this is called the Boundary Road Estate. And just here, when I was a child, that's where we lived, in uh, Laylam Buildings. And the history of this place is, uh, I'll just... I won't read all this, you put it on pause if you want to read it, it's just a precy of the information. Um, old Nichols, Charles Dickens took a lot of his characters from here, but by God it was filthy. Uh, no, um, no toilet facilities uh, and uh, all the slops were thrown out into the roadway or the gutter at the front. And they might have families of up to 25 living in a couple of rooms. And remind me uh, about hanging about where the phrase comes from and I'll tell you about that and we lived at 29 and 33 Leyland buildings after they knocked all this down and they built a bandstand from the rubble and that's where we're going to go and walk through not a lot to see but it's just a little point of interest 
and we've got to get to Brick Lane. So we come through here. So this is where we are. Uh, we come through here. We could actually walk through here. It's not far. Uh, and I could show you that. There's some stuff there about how you used to live as a child. Uh, but I'll tell you that when we get there. And uh, then through here, uh, and then down into the lovely bits of uh, graffiti here and here, Whitby Street. But they're continually spraying over it and putting new stuff up. It's the same with all the graffiti. You never know what you're going to find next. Anyway, just here is where my uh, aunt and uncle used to live. Uh, above um, carpenter, he was a carpenter above a shop just then. Then we move on through here, up Old Nichols, uh, up here down Rhoda Street, and this, in fact, is the start of Brick Lane. All around here. Uh, you won't see a lot here because this is where it all happens, just here. And we go to the next slide, which is part two of the walk. Oh, I meant to say that bit is about 1.99 kilometres, one and a quarter miles approximately. And it would be very slow. Not too many places to have a cup of coffee, not for the moment. There, is, uh, there are a couple of places, but once we get down through here, we can stop and have a cup of coffee. There we go. Part two, Brick Lane, Whitechapel. So this is where we were above here just now. And this area here, this is where my aunt and uncle were over here. This area here is uh, Sclater Street. So we'll just go there and have a quick shuft here at Sclater Street. And uh, you can read that yourself, but it comes from, Sclater comes from um, the Orkneys. How the hell we got the word Sclater? I've got an Anglo-Saxon that, isn't it? Uh, anyway, somehow it came down here. And my mother, uh, my grandmother used to live up here in one of these. I don't know which one, but she used to live there before, uh, while she was certainly courting my, my grandfather. Her name was Sarah. Uh, Flansburg and his name was uh, uh, Solomon Levy and his Hebrew name was um, Shlomo and that's my Hebrew name, Shlomo, Shlomo ben Asher Halil. Anyway, there we go. So we move on now. Uh, so we've done that. We're going to come through here and this is the site of the original Beigel shop. Notice it's spelled B-E-I-G-E-L. Beigel. Some people pronounce it bagel, but only if you push it's bagel because it's a Yiddish word. It comes from uh, the mid European places. It's a mixture of uh, German, Polish, and all sorts of things. It's Yiddish. Beigel. My granddaughter tells me off because I'm not pronouncing it properly, but what does she know? Well, everything because she's 15. So uh, we come through here. Lots of photo opportunities down here, actually. Um, people that just dress differently. If you're going to be tourists, you're going to have to take your time to take your photographs and see what you can find. Um, Brick Lane Market, just here. Now, it, it, some markets are good, some are not so good. This is okay. Uh, and if you want to go in and have a look, then we'll, we'll all do that. The entrance is just down here, actually. Um, you can buy hats or records or anything like that. But there are other, other markets that just don't go spending all your money in those places. But there are great photo opportunities in these places uh, for people that are buying things, market stalls and what have you. Then we're going to come up Quaker Street, um, around the back of the Truman Brewery. And the Truman Brewery um, was one of the very first breweries in the whole of the country. Uh, and uh, as a kid, I just remember that, that yeasty type smell or barley type smell of it. The whole place stunk of it. As did this bit, this top half, certainly, of Brick Lane. This was, uh, this was full of uh, Jewish delicatessen shops, uh, barrels of pickled herring. Uh, and, uh, well, pickled everything, and pickled cucumbers. And it just had that different smell wooden barrels full of all this stuff and people with leather 
uh, pennies on and uh, uh, long ringlets, you know, because they were very orthodox Jews and things like this. So uh, anyway, uh, it's all a bit different. You come round here, through here, uh, round the back of um, Truman's, through these uh, rather beautiful streets. Sometimes you can pick up um, uh, some marvellous graffiti, but anyway, sometimes you can't. But we're going to come across here now to the start of Spitalfield Market. And in here, hopefully, we can get a rest and lunch and a cup of coffee and a break, and you can go and have a walk round. It's quite a fabulous little place. There is a, uh, a note on that. Um, and it was founded in uh, 1197. So it's been there for some time. All of these were fields at the time. Spittle, don't know where that comes from. Field. So it was a field. Um, and um, it's still a market now. It's just got all these rather wonderful people. And it's where the Huguenots, in the area where the Huguenots, um, first came to um, to live in the East End of London. Um, some more on that in a little while. Uh, but they were very, very important to the East End of London. I'll point that out a little bit later. And uh, we'll go back to the map. So that's Spitalfield. A, uh, a video here. I'll just click on that. Of one in six Britons today have Huguenot blood. No small reason for that is what happened right here in Spitalfields, East London, at the end of the 17th century. The arriving Huguenots brought with them an array of skills. They were master gold and silversmiths, clockmakers, and optometrists. But perhaps their greatest talent was in the field of silk weaving. Spitalfields was transformed into a weaver town. With the Huguenot abilities superseding those of their English. So, one in six people, I don't know if that was just London or the whole of the country, uh, have uh, Huguenot blood. That's quite interesting. Um, and now we're going to come up to the next church and a pub. And this is Christ Church at Spitalsfield, Anglican, rather beautiful. Uh, certainly from the outside, there were loads of them built uh, at the time that this was built. Um, and they're, they're quite magnificent. I've never been in there, but uh, I think you have to make arrangements to go through. As with most churches, you probably have to pay when you enter if you want to take photographs. And here's the pub. Um, and uh, it, it's not very famous, other than the fact it was built in 1752, apparently. Uh, but in, it got his name, James the Jack the Ripper, by the landlord, hoping to cash in on its history. But in reality, it wasn't really that close to anything. Anyway, there we go. Uh, we go back now. So we've done the church and the pub. Now these here, you see these stars that I've got here. These are uh, an extra slide I've put in for Jack the Ripper, and it's the location of the Jack the Rippers that we're going to be close to. You can walk past them. Not much to see. So we go back up, um, and here are more markets. Now, once we get into these markets here, some of you won't want to come out. Um, they're quite spectacular, vintage stuff, and um, I, I rather love it, to be honest with you. Uh, and it's here that we can get uh, some good shots of people doing market stuff. And sometimes you've got. Around here there's a Sunday market down Sclater Street and Petticoat Lane's over in this direction. And uh, they're only on on Sunday, so we won't see too much of that. But there are plenty of people, you never know who you're going to see, people with pith helmets or just dress rather exotically. And uh, these areas down here uh, are plenty of places. It's known as the Curry Mile as well because it's now very Bangladeshi. Uh, uh, if there are any Jews left in the area, I'd be very surprised. Same as Huguenots. Probably are, but not that many I would have thought. Mainly Bangladeshi. Down here, there's a, it's a commemoration here to Altab Ali Park, uh, who was murdered um, off of Brick Lane. And the support between the um, 
the Muslim population and the Jews were unbelievable. I, I, we end around here. That's the end of our tour, sadly. Uh, 2.2 miles, uh, kilometres, 1.37 miles. Um, and uh, just down in this direction is uh, the Tower and the Tower of London, etc. We can walk down there if you want, or if I've got any legs left, we could. And um, But from there, we're going to go on uh, now on the slides. We're going to go and have a look at Jack the Ripper. Um, and uh, here's the information about Jack the Ripper. Um, 1888, really. 89. 1891 rather um, and all these poor ladies here are we're going to pass by them we want to be quite close to uh, to where they um, had their final hours um, so this is Brick Lane over here on the right this pink bit here and uh, these are where we're going to be we could walk down to it but to be quite honest with you if you look down here at 29 Hanbury what you'll see uh, is a new building. So it, it, same with the rest of it, and Osborne Street down here, new building. Uh, here, I, I didn't really manage to get anything at all, um, the sense of what might have been there. So um, not as hot as um, as I'd like it to be. Uh, there isn't anything that I can, um, I can add to this. I don't really know a lot about Jack the Ripper. This here, by the way, this red line here, this is the London Wall. There's only a little bit left just here. Uh, but the London Wall was the reason that all of this developed because this is Docklands over here. St Catherine's Docks outside of the London Wall. So it was protected. You couldn't get into the city. So uh, the dockers and the sailors used to uh, come up along here, Limehouse and Wapping. And uh, they needed places to live, and that's where they came to, and this is why all this developed. So there we are. Uh, that's it, really. Uh, and if you've got any questions, uh, please ask. I'm now going to try and put this together and um, see what happens.
uh, but I know people that had gone to support and it was just the most um, terrifying thing ever just
the, the lag was in this long, very sad fact. Anyway, we're going to come down here. I can't remember if I mentioned these stars here, but these are extra jack.
We could walk if anybody still had any legs left. Uh, we would have done another 2.2 .2 kilometers.